My name is Alan Donaldson and I'm the European Baptist Federation General Secretary. Today is October the 31st and right now I'm sitting at home on my canal boat in Scotland. It's a peaceful day, just a gentle ripple on the sea and any sounds you hear in the background will be of children having fun, of construction work happening locally and people continuing their everyday business. But at this exact moment in Ukraine, missiles are landing once more. The city of Kyiv is under siege and the government have asked the residents of Kyiv to remain within their bunkers. I've been asked to answer the question, what is happening in our region at this time? The big question that is being asked in Europe is how long will neighboring nations support Ukraine? It's a question that is being asked by both the church and by the state. NATO allies say that they will report, uh, support Ukraine for the long term as long as it takes. They will help them to build air defence systems against these missiles and drone attacks that we have experienced in the last few weeks. As NATO nations continue to supply arms to Ukraine, their own supplies begin to run low. And the question is, how far will NATO supplies go down before they will stop providing support? A Lithuanian government minister said, Ukrainians are fighting this battle for all of us, so we shall give them what they need. This is a typical response by the Baltic states and by Poland, who continue to give proportionally more than any other nation around the world. A recent digital summit that took place in Tallinn, Estonia, explored questions around protecting cyber security and the digital infrastructure, including submerged internet cables and pipelines. And significant work is being done to protect the nations from cyber sabotage, with a particular concern for some of the soft targets, like smart meters and internet browsers. The Moldovan cybersecurity team report having to deal with more than five times the usual attacks on cyber security. And of course, I sit here on an autumn day with winter just around the corner in Europe. There are fears that not only in Ukraine, but across Europe, low gas supplies, low fuel supplies, and attacks on electrical power generation will cause great distress in the nations. Ukraine is already rationing its energy supplies with around 30% of their power stations out of order. In recent days, the Vice President of Ukraine has said to those Ukrainians living outside of the nation not to return to Ukraine this winter in order that they might conserve electricity for essential purposes. There are fears that in Europe this winter, other nations will also suffer significantly. Fuel prices, including household electric and gas, have increased significantly throughout the region. Families wear extra clothes in their home to reduce the amount of power being consumed. For most, it will be nothing more than a mere inconvenience, switching off power, putting on an extra jumper, skipping a meal, or spending more time in public buildings. The rising cost of living varies between 10% in the UK and 178% in Lebanon this year. Currently, Europe is housing 7.7 .7 million refugees with one and a half million residing in Poland. Moldova, Europe's poorest country, hosts the highest number of refugees per capita. 
Where will they all go is one of the questions that is being asked. How long will they stay? In the Netherlands there are political tensions around the housing of Ukrainians on luxury cruise ships. But this form of accommodation I have also seen in my hometown of Glasgow and in Tallinn, Estonia. Questions like how long can we afford to house these Ukrainians and look after them? Especially in a time where we do not increase benefits for the disabled by inflation. With a strong resemblance to the challenges facing the early church in Acts 6, neighbouring country churches ask, how do we balance ministries that we had before the war with the new ministries we now have? The very nature of Baptist unions in the region are changing. Currently the largest Baptist churches in Poland are Ukrainian speaking. There are possibly more Ukrainian Baptists in Poland today than there are Polish Baptists. How do you respond to that? How does that change the shape and ministry of the local church? There is a recognition that unions need to deal with these circumstances carefully and to get things right for the future. This is no longer an emergency response where we do our best with the resources that we have and the challenges that we face. The churches are undergoing an existential change that will last. It has and is changing the culture of the church in the region. It is also changing future conversations within the EBF. The European Baptist Federation staff team pivoted for the emergency response back in February. Now we have to ask new questions about the long term. What will it look like for us to walk faithfully with our members at this time of great turmoil and stress? When the EBF Council was asked to list the central issues for future exploration, they included disaster response, cultural, societal and demographic change, peacemaking and reconciliation. How do we deal with constant change? How do we build capacity for this work within our unions? In all of these regional changes, we must also consider the situation faced by our Russian Baptist brothers and sisters and those living in Belarus. Right now in Belarus there are significant number of Russian troops participating in military exercises along with Belarusians. There is a great fear among the Belarus people that they will be forced into this war by Russia. Today, Russian Baptists are also suffering under sanctions. They suffer financial loss as well as the loss of relationships. They have chosen to be very cautious about what they are condemning publicly, but they have in their latest public statement restated their pacifist views in an act of resistance relating to possible forced conscription. As a nation, and as a church they are currently experiencing a migration of their own, a brain drain of the younger generation leaving the nation for Turkey, Georgia, Kazakhstan, Serbia and Armenia, where churches seek to welcome and give support to those who have felt forced into migration. Yet the question in these lands is, what should welcome look like? Is welcoming a threat to long-term security? Will Putin come one day to protect these Russian citizens in the future, as he claims to protect the Russian citizens in Ukraine today? It is even reported that there are hotels in Georgia where Russian companies have relocated young tech-savvy staff and their families to work and live in community. Right now, more nations are being drawn into this ever more complex war response and therefore 
It is on the agenda of almost every Baptist Union and Convention in the region as we seek to understand what the Lord requires of us today. Please pray for us and continue to support the work that is happening in Ukraine and in the surrounding nations. Thank you.